Buenos días, muchachos y muchachas, and welcome to Guayaquil. Guayaquil is the city that most Ecuadorians have warned me about. Do not come to Guayaquil is what they've told me. This city is supposed to be Ecuador's most dangerous city. And that is what we're going to go and find out today. But first, we're going to get a little bite of something to eat. I see they're selling some food here. ¿Qué es un sándwich de chancho? Sí, es fritada. Fritada. Así te llamo. Chito, es, viene con chifle, Ajá. con mote, con papita, con ensalada y la salsa de maní a su gusto. Y cerdo. Cerdito, cerdito. Y cerdo. Sí. ¿Cuánto o sea, cuesta? Le, ¿Cuánto vale? Planta de $2.50, de 3, de 5 y de 100 dólares. ¿Es como sándwich o.? Es con mote, no, no sé. No. Ah, con mote. No? Sí, con mote, oh, okay. con chifle. Con ensalada y ah. sale, va a ser, va a ser un plato. ¿Con 3 dólares? $2.50, de 3, de 5, de 7, todo precio. De, de 3, prueba. Ya, con todo. Con todo. Como se hace la gente. ¿Ustedes son de acá? Sí. Ah, okay. Y eso es muy buena comida de. De Ecuador. De Ecuador, sí. de Guayaquil. Sí. Es como similar al horneado. Sí, es similar. Ah, sí, ¿eh? oh, okay. ah ya, ya. Bueno, si no es que el Chancho. Prueba. ¿Esto es para mí? Sí, prueba, prueba. Ok. Mm. Rico. All right. So we're getting what's called fritada, decía. Sí, es fritada, cerdo, o sea, la carne del chanchito, cerdo. Chancho. Sí, viene lo que es chifle. El chifle Así. es... Chifre. De plátano. Plátano. De banana. Mote. Mote. De sí, maíz. Maíz. Sí, maíz. Sí, sí, choclo. Sí, sí. Viene con papa. Ajá. Eh, viene con maduro. Ok. Y la ensalada que es cebolla y tomate. Uh -huh. Y la salsa de maní con ají fresco. Este. Salsa de maní. Ah. Uh -huh. sí. Como en Bolivia, salsa de maní. Sí, es diferente. Sí, es diferente sí. seguramente. And over here she's frying the, the pork. So it's fried pork. That's why it's fritada. Fried, and then we've got the corn thingy here. Those white things are corn and banana chips, and then a bit of salad and some potato as well. And then we've got a peanut sauce there, and another spicy sauce here. Three dollars. Let's try it. As you know, pork is my favorite, favorite food of them all. So hopefully this is going to be good. Three dollars. Let's get it. Let's try. Let's get stuck in. So food has arrived. Check it out. So we've got a bit of potatoes on the top, a good load of pork here, a little bit of salad as well, some some, some onions, uh, avocado. Palta tiene aguacate igual. Eh, con pepino y tomate. Let's try. Poco de eso. Poquito picante. Picante. Sí, poquito. Genial. So a bit of this peanut sauce. It's a little bit spicy, that peanut sauce. That's lovely, muy bueno. And the meat is very tender. Let's try the potato here as well. The meat is so tender. It just kind of melts on your mouth, in your tongue. On your tongue, I should say. Let's get some more of this peanut sauce on here. Dip it in that. Mmm. That's fantastic. This is Ecuador's next best food after horneado. Beautiful. Let's try a little bit of this potato again. And let's get our mouth, stomach full before we go and explore the rest of the city of Guayaquil. What a lovely lunch. Little snack there to get ourselves started before we go check out Guayaquil. Today in Guayaquil, we're here in the center we're in the finance district. This is basically the Wall Street area. We have a bank over here called Banco Guayaquil. A bank that I've seen everywhere in all of Ecuador. Hola. Como? Ah. He's saying don't film here. That's not his business as long as I don't go into the bank. But yeah, as I say, we're in this Wall Street-like area here. Next to all the banks of Ecuador seems to be here. Guayaquil seems to be the most finance stock market um, city of Ecuador where all the trade is happening you might be saying but hey Sebastian why aren't you in 
that outskirt area of the city that you usually are. Why aren't you in the hood? So why aren't you out in another area, not so normal business-like or central area like you usually do? The answer to that is pretty simple. There's simply nothing going on outside of this city. This city has a curfew at the moment. From eight o'clock at night, all streets are completely dead. Just a few criminals running around till five in the morning. That is for safety reasons. The president of Ecuador has simply put in a curfew, ordering people to stay at home from eight at night till five in the morning, which is, in my opinion, absolutely ridiculous. Of course, it might be dangerous, but when a government starts putting in those types of measures, restricting your civil freedom, your civil rights to move around, that's a sliding slope. But that's for another day. This city obviously has a terrible reputation and with that type of regulation, it's not helping it. Let's just put it that way. But let's go and see what we can find, what we can do. Even though we're in an unusual city, part of the city where we would normally not go. But in this city, there is nowhere else that I can find any life. So let's get stuck into it. One place, one place that we can go though, is the central market. Be that if it's still open at this time, because it is now uh, about four o'clock. Oh, gotta get in here. So yeah, we can go to the central market to see around that area. I need to buy a, a few little supplies, a coffee filter, maybe try another juice or some another snack or something. So let's head to the central market and see if we can find some life down that way. Let's go explore. Now it's starting to get a lot more busy. Little shops, market area, starting to pop up, as you can see behind me. Fruits and vegetables, all sorts of little, what is those? Platforms for your shoes. And yeah, I think the market is basically down this way. See, the street is busy here. In this area, there's people. Little kids, or what looks like a teenager, walking, working in the bus. People selling Flor de Jamaica. All sorts of interesting stuff for sale. So let's go and see exactly what we can find here in this market. But as you can see there, lots of security guys like this guy here. Similarly to the guy who was selling, um, who was standing in front of the, of the bank earlier today. Here we have the central market. This is the market area right here, 3 TK I'll say. Let's go and find something. Let's see what we can find. Guanabana? Si. Sí. Guanabana. Es como para tomar jugo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Esto es. O se vende vaso. Así. Así nomás. Botella. ¿Cuánto vale? Un dólar. Un dólar. ¿Se puede probar uno? Okay. Uno, por favor. ¿Qué es este fruta? Yeah. ¿Qué tipo de sabor? Sabroso. Sabroso. <laughs> Pero ¿qué tipo de sabor? A ver, let's try. Mmm. Es rico. Es como cremoso. Como coco. Pero otro tipo de sabor más frutado. Como ácido un poco. Salud. Rico, ¿no? It's like a creamy, fruity, acidic juice. Check it out, this is the fruit here. For just a dollar. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Kind of like a toned down pineapple. Es como piña, pero menos acidic. Eso es el sabor. Ahí está. ¿De dónde son ustedes? Venezuela. ¿De Venezuela? Ah, no de acá. Ah, okay. ¿Y cómo llegaron acá? Migrando. Migrando. ¿Y qué tal la vida acá? Bien. ¿Bien? 
Porque no mucha gente, eso. ahora hay toque de queda, dice. Sí, porque es peligrosa. Delincuencia. En la noche. En el día no tanto. ¿o? ¿Cómo? Ah, okay. ¿Y dónde Venezuela? ¿Caracas? Sí. Ah, ok. Quiero ir a conocer Caracas o Venezuela en general. Al futuro. Gracias. So, first little juice thingy here. As I said, like a pineapple. Those two guys from Venezuela. Must be a tough situation coming from. You speak English. I do. Do you speak English? Fantastic. <laughs> Must be a tough thing coming from Venezuela all the way to Ecuador in search of a better life, and then coming to a city that's full of uh, that's full of a curfew and everything. All right, let's head into the central market over there and see what we can find. And finish our juice. See you in there. So we made it into the market. Check it out. We've got the fresh meat here, fruits and vegetables over here, plants and everything. Hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Dónde hay queso? Aquí. Ah, okay. Es buena queso. Es buen queso. Acá. Ah, okay. Gracias. Aquí vende queso. Es su hija. Vecina. Ah. Debería estar el contrato. Vende bien. Yo Dinamarca. Sí. Um, este queso cuánto vale? ¿Cuánto? Tres. Danés, mi idioma nativo, inglés y español. ¿Usted de dónde? De aquí, de ¿De Guayaquil o de otro lugar? De otro... Chimborazo. Chimborazo, ah, las sierras. Ah, pero ahora vives acá. ¿Cómo llegaste acá? Trabajando. Trabajando. Ahora dicen todos, muy peligroso en Guayaquil. ¿En serio? Porque me han dicho que hay toque de queda, que a las 8 se cierra en la calle. Eso es, no es su hija, tu vecina. Ah, ok. ¿Y este queso cuánto vale? 2.50 la libra. ¿Es lo mismo? Este y este. Sí. Ah, ok. Un pedazo así, ¿cuánto vale? Dólar 25. Dólar 25. Ok. Um, sí. Un pedazo así entonces, por favor. ¿Puedo llevar? Sí. Para mi desayuno y mis, eh, mi, mi comida. O que era a local cheese. ¿Qué tipo de queso es? Queso de vaca, de cerdo. De vaca. Oh, de cerdo no existe. De... <risa> ¿Cómo se llama? Borrego. Chivo. ¿Y cuántos años lleva en Guayaquil? Ya, 25 años. 20... Ah, ok. ¿Y hace cuánto empezó, empezó a ser así como peligroso? Desde que después de la pandemia. Desde después de la pandemia. ¿Por qué? Antes de la pandemia todo bien. ¿Por qué? ¿Por nuevo presidente o...? No, sino por la economía, aquí ya no hay trabajo. ¿Aquí? Pero aquí hay más bancos, más inversiones que el resto del país, ¿no? No quieren trabajar. Ya quieren... No quieren trabajar. Ah, ok. ¿Pandillas de afuera? ¿O de, de Ecuador mismo? De Ecuador mismo. Bueno, gracias. Suerte. Gracias. So we got some cheese. Means we're ready to explore the rest of the market. Or uh, the rest of the area here. I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else we can find. Maybe we can find another little juice or something on the outside. Let's head out of this market again. You see here, here's the food section, but obviously they're closed at this point. Hola. <laughs> ¿Qué hace? Esto no me grave. ¿Qué hace comida? Allá, allá, allá. Allá. Ajá. Pero ya cerrado. Sí. Está cerrado. Y ya no, ya no vende. Ya no. Es solo para almuerzo. Ah, oh, ok, ok. Qué ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo se llama? Uh, Pilgar Explorers. So yeah, as I was saying, this is the food section here behind me. The lady there is, I think she's preparing lunch for tomorrow. Before, 
before she goes home for today. But here you have them all. These are the, the meat section, the cheese section where we just bought the cheese here, the little the little girl. Business girl, already at five, six, seven years old, telling me where the cheese is, helping to sell. All right, let's get out of the market and go to the outside part of the market, in the streets. Oh my God, it is busy here on the outside. Finally found a section with some food. Oh, with some food, with some people. Finishing up my lovely juice here. This might be one of the best juices I've had ever in South America and Latin America. As I said when I had it, oh, let's get away from this. It, it basically feels like a pineapple juice with just less acidic than, yeah, than a normal pineapple. Check it out. Hola, ¿cómo estás? <laughs> Feel God Explores! Alright! A little bit of a lovely man there. So, here we see this is the metro system of Guayaquil right here. The buses come driving up and down these roads, it stops at these stations here. So they don't have a metro here. Van? Como? ¿Qué vende? Plátano. Plátano. Plátano crellado. Bueno. Gracias. So they are selling some kind of grilled banana with some sausages. Not a big fan of these plantain, grilled plantain, to be honest. I've had it a lot, and yeah, no matter how many times I have it, I'm never get much of a fan of it. The sausage looks nice though, but as you know, nothing is better than some grilled roast pork, lechon, hornado, and this fritada that we had in the beginning of the video today. Here there's at least some life, where it seems ever so slightly like normal, and people don't seem... Hold on here. Celtics. Hello. Irish football team. Hola. Hello. Celtic. Ah, Celtic. Celtic. Mejor equipo de Irlanda. <laughs> sí. Who sells this? Celtic. ¿Es su gorra? Yes. ¿Usted vende? Yes. ¿Habla inglés? No. 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 <laughs> Básico. How much the gorra? Uh, five. For Celtic. Five. El este que allá. From Celtic. Three. 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 Two. Three. Mejor precio. Okay. Uno. Te puedo. Para las sierras. En Quito es frío. Mucho frío. This is Celtic. Este. Este. Celtics. Tres. Y este tres. Este tres. También abrigado. También es cálido. Sí, pero ese no es Celtic. No, este 5 because it's bordado, bordado, ah. bordado. Ah, okay. 5? 5. 4? 5. She doesn't want to park it. 5. No, no, no hay regatea. Regateo. <laughs> no, pues. Este se da, normalmente se da. Ajá. Uh -huh. Bueno, okay. acá te voy a rebajar 1, 4. 1. Hay que negociar en los mercados normalmente. A ver, aquí. There we go. Perfecto. Thank you. All right. So we're ready. Let's try it on. Even though it's way too hot to wear a beanie hat here, let's just try it on our little hat. Now we're not gonna die of the cold up in Quito. Check it out. What do you say? <laughs> Celtic or Boston Celtics. I think this one is actually Boston Celtics. Not, not Celtic as in the football team, but still support our Irish brothers. Another nation dear to my heart. Hola, ¿cómo está? 
Aquí no vende ropa para mujer todo. No de mujer. Ah, no para mí. <risa> ah, ok. Ten buen día. And with our Boston Celtics or Celtic merch. We're ready. It is Boston Celtics. We're ready to go and check out the rest of the month. Rest of it and ready to go to Quito, up to the mountains again, without dying of the cold. So we can bargain a little bit for prices here in Ecuador. And I tell you what, that's the thing I've been noticing going through Ecuador now for about a month. Prices here are pretty pretty expensive compared to compared to other countries here in South America. Prices here are a couple dollars at least for for lunch and when you eat out for like in a nice restaurant you easily spend twenty dollars as a couple. Two food two dishes and two beers or something like that. What is going on here? Zapatos. Ah okay. Es, eh, ¿Cómo se dice? Venta barato. Sí. Ah, ok. Oye, 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 ¿Cuánto vale un par de zapatos? ¿Qué talla? 43, 44, 30, 30. Ok. Talla grande. Talla grande. Talla, bar talla pequeño más barato. Claro que sí. Ah, ok. Oyes. Oh, yes. <risa> Ecuador muy caro las cosas. Sí. Colombia más barato. Perú más barato. Aquí va bastante caro. Ah, sí. 29. So it's all like leather shoes. Botas no hay. También botas. Bota caña larga. Ah, militar bota. Sí, bota militar, ah. bota chiquita, bota. Más otro bota vos. <laughs> ok, gracias. Tengo. So, as I was saying, things here in Ecuador seem pretty expensive. You easily, you easily, as you see there, a couple of, a pair of shoes, $30. If I look at the price in the same kind of shoes in Colombia, it would cost me $15, $20. $20. And they would be for a uh, an international brand that we all know not this whatever this was called bunkers whatever the price was bunkers I will tell you that much and yeah in general it is just pretty expensive here in Ecuador compared to the other countries I guess that's a that is a, a factor of having the dollar as their main currency and having an artificial low minimum salary doesn't help because that just knows, that just tells every business in the country that you will have at least, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's like $550, the minimum salary in Ecuador per month. And that means it's, anyways, it's significantly higher than what it is in, I might be wrong, I might be too tall there with the, with the, with the amounts, but the meaning of a higher minimum salary just means if the value is not being provided, people will still be poor with a with a high-ish, artificially high minimum salary. And each business will just raise prices accordingly because they know, now you know, now you earn, say, 550. It might be a little bit lower than the, actually that. So yeah, I think that is the main reason why Ecuador is so expensive compared to other countries. Morocho, morocho. That's enough. I think that's enough shopping around for now here in the market. I think we're gonna head back home. Hello. Here the kids are playing football. <laughs> we're gonna head back to the apartment that I've rented, get some dinner, have a few beers, and let the night pass by since we can't go outside anyways. This city does have this dangerous reputation, but I mean, at least at, night, at the day, it doesn't seem to be too bad. The Where we can see it though, is the effect that as I was saying in the beginning of the video, outside of this little area in the center where the market is, and then in the other part of the center, the more finance area where all the banks are and all the investment guys are. Outside of those two areas, everything is dead. And I guess that's a function of just having full, 
uh, basically having dominated the people into being scared of, uh, of life, of going outside, getting robbed, putting their lives at risk. So people prefer to stay inside or just drive from, from home to, to work and back at home again and not do anything outside in the streets. As I was saying, the government are putting a curfew. I'm living on this street here. Yeah. I've rented an apartment further down this street, down behind me. And yeah, at eight o'clock last night, I peeked outside. It was completely dead. Absolutely no one. Hello. <laughs> Absolutely no one was in the streets. And now I know why today, seeing as it is because the government has put in a curfew. People in Ecuador are not happy with the government. And I can see why. Because that, as I said earlier, is a sliding slope once you start putting that type of regulation in. With that said, I'll probably show you a little, a little peek outdoors at eight o'clock this evening or nine o'clock or something. So all you can see for yourself how dead it really is here. We'll end this video here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you when I see you further up the coast.